It wasn't until I went back and started using Photoshop a little bit more that I realized that I've been using a workaround in Sketch for creating a single-sided stroke or a single-sided border around an object uh, using the shadows feature. So for a lot of you, you'll hear that and you'll think, oh, great, I don't need to watch this. I know exactly what that means. But for those of you who don't know what it means, I'm going to quickly create a rectangle and I'm going to make it uh, sort of like a button. And now that I've created that rectangle, I'm going to get rid of the border, and I'm also going to option drag it to duplicate it. I'll create a little gap here between them, and I'll hit Command D a couple of times so I have several of these. So now, let's say that I make these all white, or that I make them a much lighter color. I'm going to go almost white so we can still see them. Now, I might want a stroke or a border to be at the top and the bottom of each button. I may want a border just at the bottom. I may want a border just on the left. Uh, using the borders feature, we get a border all around, whether we like it or not. So let's instead use the shadows feature, or better yet, we can use inner shadows, so that way we don't add any content outside of the boundaries of the shapes that we made, uh, meaning we don't necessarily want the rectangles to be bigger because of this line that we're creating. So I'm going to do inner shadow, and rather than making it look indented like that and pressed like that, I'm going to turn the blur down to zero. And you can see that because our Y position is one, we have one pixel uh, in the downward position where that shows up. Y is up and down, X is left and right. So negative one means that we get a border at the bottom. And we could also go to uh, negative two if we want that to be thicker. And now with that, that could almost behave as a shadow if we wanted it to, or we can go and throw a color on there. So let's throw a color on there. Let's make it like a teal color and now we've got our bottom border so it's that easy and you can apply that border to any side that you want uh, by playing with the different X and Y coordinates here so if I go uh, to X1 that's gonna give me a border on the left hand side if I go over here and I do X negative 1 or negative 2 and I bring the Y down uh, then there we go I've got my right side border so you've got a lot more control with borders now but without even using the borders feature. Uh, so you can really go nuts with that. The other cool thing is, uh, let's say I want to get the top and the bottom. Let's say I want all of these to have that border on the top and the bottom. First, I'm going to copy and paste the style of this one. I'm going to do Option Command C to copy the style of this one. And I'm going to do Option Command V to paste it. So now they all match again like they did before. Now I'm going to select all of these. And instead of creating uh, another shadow, which is essentially how we're going to do this. I'm going to go to the little space here between the color and the X coordinate. I'm going to do a two finger click on my MacBook Pro, which is a right click or a secondary click. And we get our dialog box, just like you normally do, except we get a duplicate option, which is sort of a secret feature here. And by duplicating that, I can now just switch one of them to be positive two instead of negative two. And now I've got my top and bottom stroke and they match with very, very little effort. Cool, cool little workaround little trick so it's something you'll definitely appreciate if you go into Photoshop because in Photoshop you got a stroke or you don't you have a shadow or you don't you don't get to have more than one uh, so by adding multiple shadows multiple fills multiple borders uh, sketch becomes an extremely powerful and flexible tool so hopefully you guys like this tutorial if you do please subscribe if you have not already I'll have more cool stuff coming at you